and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. I like my green with crystals like folders, picking up momentum, rolling like boulders. They call me ice, but I'm really much colder. My rhymes is heavy like the weight on my shoulders. I'm spitting that red hot smoldering lava. I fight to the end like the Navajo. Crack a bottle though, make it the goose with cranberry and triple sec. Triple my check, I feel the ripple effect of a fool on the loose. I hit you from every angle, from obtuse to right, street shit like J. J of dynamite, slide me some dough, I show you an execution in the flesh, and promise not to leave nothing left, if you vomit, I keep stabbing, shooting, damaging, looting, till it ain't no disputing who the greatest is, what's up party people, yeah, just hit me. What's up, everybody? Welcome, September 1st, 2020. Man, month number nine, man. Everything is fine. I hope you're smiling tonight. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're having a great evening. I hope you're looking at the things in your life that are promising and that are going to take you somewhere. Um, listen, that's what you should spend your time thinking about, not all the dumb shit and bullshit and everything that's always happening. Thanks for joining Mike Robinson Boulevard. Hey, Portis, how you doing today? Uh-oh, raise, raise the roof. That's right, y'all. Got Portis in the building. Um, we got Morris the Cat in the building. And uh, we, we're going to do the damn thing. I got a great show for you guys tonight. Yes, I know I say that every week, but I mean it. You know what I mean? I put my hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into this. Tonight, I have uh, my... Um, lovely homegirl Lisa Rogers Cherry calling in tonight to discuss her book called Lifting the Burdens of Debt. If you got debt in your life and it's becoming a burden to you in any kind of way, I have the discussion for you. Now, if you don't have it in your life, maybe you can learn some things that you could pass on to some other folks to help them. So we're going to have a great discussion about that. We're going to get into some trending items first, and then we're going to have it cracking. Is everybody ready? Ready to do this? Like Brutus? Like Brutus? Because we always knew this. First things first, I'm very proud to say my black sister from Compton, California, my sister uh, tennis uh, extraordinaire, Serena Williams, Fine is all outside for no reason. Just made the record today at the U.S. Open. 102 wins. The most wins out of anybody at the U.S. Open ever. Before her, it was Chris Everett who had the, the, uh, the record at 101 wins. And today, party people, Serena, made it 102 Man, she's a bad mother, man. We have to really just stop and uh, pay attention to the greatness of Serena Williams, man. She's been out on the court. She didn't have a child. She, uh, you know, she lost her sister in a violent murder. She had blood clots on the plane. She almost died. Um, all types of stuff, man. And she is still at it. Against all the odds, Serena Williams, we salute. And again... Fine for no reason. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> My next trending item. This really surprised me, party people. There was a versus battle this weekend. Y'all know we've been tracking all the versus battle. This artist against this artist. And it was, uh, not this weekend, it was yesterday. But it was Brandy versus Monica. And the first thing that came to my mind was, damn, do they even have enough songs? I didn't really, I kind of slept on the sisters, man. Especially Brandy. Because Brandy came out with some hits, man. She kind of rocked it. Now, Monica, I think, is like a better singer if you just listen to her voice and stuff. 
better singer and she worked with Dallas Austin. She's got really good music behind her and stuff. But man, Brandy came with it. I was impressed. Man, I was thinking like, okay, after one or two or three songs, I'm going to be like, ah, man. Well, actually, it took about 14 or 15 songs before I was like, ah, man. <laughs> All right, I admit, I didn't finish it all the way to the end. I kind of got my good feel, but I thought they were really cool because they had a little beef and stuff back in the day. Brandy versus Monica, then they did the song, The Boy Is Mine or something. They did. They did the, the He's Mine thing. <laughs> they did. It was like, okay, okay. And apparently behind the scenes many years ago, they squashed your little beef or whatever. So the public's been thinking they had some type of beef or something, and it's been squashed. But it was good to see them together on the same stage with good energy, and they were really supporting each other and everything, being nice and friendly. So I was really impressed, man. And I had to give it to young uh, Brandy and Monica, man. Y'all did y'all thing. And uh, Monica, I found out her first song that she did, she was 12 years old. I was like, dang, 12? That's young. But I guess she was kind of looking like 12. <laughs> when I think about that video, I can't even remember the song, though. But uh, anyway, that was our versus battle. And we talked a lot about these different verses, who would be good against who and everything. And some of them seemed kind of dry, like I thought that would be, but it wasn't. Y'all could look at the replay. That was pretty good. Next item. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, man, my homie, that's not my homie, but my homie, Chad Bozeman, passed away, man, from some colon cancer, man, at the age of, what is, how old was he, 43? 43 years old, man. My brother's out there, man. You got to get yourself checked out. Now, you know, they have it at, like, 50 years old. You're supposed to get a colonostrophy and all that. Man, you better move it to 40, man. Now, um... This guy was special, man. He brought great energy. He had uh, dignity and pride and everything. We got a clip. Anything else you want to say from your heart? All of that, that 70 million um, group of young people who will come out and vote. I believe in you. I think you can turn... Um, our nation around. You can make it live up to what it's supposed to do. It's, it's not just that you're the future, you're actually the present. You're actually um, what we're supposed to be at this moment. And the fact that you have a voice, the fact that you can have a say, you know, you vote for whoever you want for, vote for what you believe in. But I believe that the majority of you can see what's actually happening and you want things to change. So. I say all that to say, you know, thank you in advance for um, for your input and the victory um, that is to come. I love those words right there, man. I want to praise you for the victory that's about to come. Man, I love when uh, people use their platform for something positive and he spoke Good, nice, um, uh, nice, proud words to our, for our people and for the youth and everything. And he did it again and again and again. Multiple interviews, uh, multiple platforms. Not a, a, in addition to starring in Black Panther, one of the best movies ever made, about a people that could be proud and be kings and have a society that operates like it's supposed to operate. Chat. Rest in peace, man. He was a cool cat, I think. Cool cat. All right, you guys. Next up, we're going to be talking about, uh, like I said, we're going to be talking about lifting the burden of debt tonight, people. We're going to be talking about looking at yourself and saying, oh, how can I make these small little tweaks? How can I do a few little things to change my current situation? And I have an expert that's going to be calling in to discuss this with us. You have to be careful because there's a lot of traps out there. 
and people don't care about putting you in debt for their benefit. A lot of traps, a lot of traps, such as myself. I was trapped. <laughs> What, what is I was going to ask you how old were you when you got your first credit card. Oh, man, you're right on, on point. When I got my first credit card, I was, how old was I? I was 19 years old. I was 19 years old, and a lady was sitting at my college library, and she was handing out some M&M's. And she drew me to the table for the M&Ms and said, fill out this form, fill out this form, and you can get a credit card. I was excited, man. My first credit card? Really? You're going to give me a card? I don't even have a job. Well, guess what? I got a credit card to Rich's Department Store. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> Rich's... <laughs> Rich is just, I guess, an East Coast Southern department store or something. It's kind of like May Company or Broadway or something like that. Anyway, I got a credit card from Rich's, and my limit, get this, my limit was $700. Man, they did me wrong, man. They sent me to the depths of hell. I literally got this credit card by the first time I got my first statement. My shit was already up to $700. I bought clothes, I bought drawers, I bought a comforter, I bought some tires and shit for my car. <laughs> I was like, spin, 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 spin. And they had me hooked. Hook and ladder, man. Starts off sweet. It doesn't end that way. All right, on the phone right now, I have, like I said, my good friend and author, Miss Lisa Rogers Cherry. What's up? How are you? Good. How you doing? Great. Ex I'm excited to be here. Man, I love my sisters, man, because you know why? You guys are so timely. I said, call, call in at 840. You called in at 839. Hey, that's what we do. That's, that's how we roll. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> to be on time is to be late, people. <laughs> that's, you know what? They used to say that... that we learned that, too, but I don't think we learned that at Spelman. Morehouse used to say that. I don't think the Spelmanites said that during our time. Yeah, exactly. That was our, We learned that on day one at Morehouse. To be on okay. time is to be late. It's like, damn, well, what does this mean? They had to explain that shit to me. Like, what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we didn't get that memo. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you mean if I'm late? I'm, wait, what? <laughs> no, nah, it's a great thing because literally if you wait to the moment you get there, you don't have time to, you know, get, get your mind right and get prepared. Catch your breath. And, right, you catch know, your you breath. You know, I, I took one uh, class, well, I took several classes at Memorial House, um, and the class with Mr. McLaurin, the business class, did you take that class? Mm-hmm. Sure and, enough. I mean, he, I think he stressed being on time, so I may have learned it in there. But oh, is that where you learned it? That, yeah, <laughs> other than that, that's not my thing. Uh, okay. Oh, other than that, all right. Hey, you know what? See, I'm in L.A. where we have this 10 to 15 minute excuse that it, that applies to everybody because you could just say, man, it was the traffic, man. It was the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> everybody lives by it. <laughs> well, uh, I'm on the coast. I think it's the heat. You know, the heat makes us late. Oh, so the heat? Oh, you blame it on the hot. heat, huh? <laughs> just, yeah, just being hot. It's like, okay, it's, it's too hot to rush. <laughs> You're like, I was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rush me. It's hot. Right. I didn't want to come in here sweating. All right. right. Your book is very exciting. Let me tell you this. Um, I feel like I have done a good job with lifting my personal burdens of debt, but you show me ways that I am not. <laughs> really? Yeah. And you like also... you started reading my book? Did I start? <laughs> what do you <Yeah>. mean? <laughs> Because people get the book, you know, they'll say, oh, I'm going to buy the book, and they buy it, and they have it, and they put it on their nightstand, and sometimes they don't read it. Oh, sometimes they don't read it? No. Uh, well, you know what? I'm not that kind of guy, especially when I'm about to uh, have a discussion with you about it. Okay. Um, I did. Well, it's an easy read, right? It, yeah, it's definitely an easy read. And, and I, made it, I made it friendly 
mm -hmm. user friendly. Anybody can read it. Anybody can use the the worksheets. I mean, it's 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 a good go to self help. Yeah, guide. yeah, and that's one thing that I really paid attention to, is that you spent a lot of time, um, like you know, you talk about removing debt, but you spent a mm -hmm. lot of time explaining to people how they even got the debt. Right. It comes from so many places. Can you talk about that? Well, it, it's interesting because a lot of people, let's back up. I started in this business, um, I became a, an executive director of a community development corporation where I was initially trying to help first-time home buyers purchase homes. And a lot of people that came to me had credit issues. So before we could even get them into home ownership, we had to clear their credit. So I had to become a certified credit counselor to do that. Right on the spot? To, but, right. I, I decided to. <laughs> that was the best way to help them, you know, was to, to go through the process with them and be able to, to dissect the issues. And, and people, Mike, I've seen all kinds of credit issues, credit reports with all 75-page credit reports, like all, everything you can imagine I've seen. 75-page so, long credit report. Yes, I mean like like Dang. back when they back when they used to print them out, what is the dot matrix? Do, 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 oh yeah, oh <laughs> oh from straight from the uh, what do they call that shit? The mainframe. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, that. So I mean, um, people would come in and and they had no idea because they had never pulled their credit reports. And I suggest that people pull their credit reports now and to make sure. Even if you feel like, okay, I've done well, and like you probably don't have that, uh, that many issues, you know, that you know of, check it. Some people may have the same name as you. You're, you may be a, a junior or, you know, Joe Blow the Third, and you may have some of your dad or grandfather's issues, or somebody across the country may have the same name as you, and their issues can possibly show up on your credit report. So that's why I suggest that people pull their credit report a couple times a year and you won't get pinged for it like every six months or so just check it and and different people join different credit um, associations to do that but you can go to you know my credit dot com or credit their credit scores dot com whatever you know different credit agencies will allow you to pull your credit report and you won't get dinged for it there are three different credit bureaus that you report to and, you know, if there's something on there that's derogatory, that's not yours, you can r r write a letter to those different agencies. And all of that's in my book. And that you can tell them, hey, you know, this isn't my issue. I don't know who this is, but you can dispute it. And nine times out of ten, if they find it, that it's not yours, they have to take it off. Well, if you have, if you're somebody that has 75 pages, man, you already know you've been living foul. You don't even <laughs> you don't even have to wait to get the report before you know. <laughs> but everybody doesn't have seventy five pages. But I mean, I've seen some cases, and you know, where it's been rough, where it's like, okay, you have to dispute these things. And I mean, and some things come off after a certain period of time, and some things stay on there forever. And you know, it's different rules for different things. But the average person. I would say, hey, pull your, your credit report and see what's on it and go from there. That's one, one of the ways that you can, you can start the process. I mean, some people have 850 credit scores. That's like perfect. That's rare. You know, they've never had a blemish. They've paid everything on time. You know, they started out good, and maybe their parents helped them out along the way. Don't like say her. maybe, goddamn! You, got the, you ain't never, <laughs> you ain't never like went president. into president. <laughs> yeah, your president got, said he got a little help. Yeah. I mean, if we all got a little help, like a million dollars or two to start off, I don't think we'd have too bad a credit. But right, hey. exactly. Well, um, and, and oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was gonna say that a lot of people are embarrassed and they don't know where to start or who to talk to or where to turn to, and they don't do anything. I had um, a client come to me, uh, and I met her. I didn't know her, so I didn't meet her in my office. I met her at um, one of the local bookstores. It was on the weekend. She was a friend of a friend, mm -hmm. and she said she just wanted to talk to somebody, so the friend referred her, so I met her at the bookstore. And we were talking. She walked up, and she walked up with this big 
like a black garbage bag. And I'm like, okay, what is in the garbage bag? You know, I didn't say anything. Then it's a no judgment. Hey, we could talk about whatever. I'm here to help. So we were talking, and she said, um, do you mind if I share my bills with you so you can see what I have? And I said, sure. Like, she hadn't opened her mail in, like, two years. Uh... She had gone through... She had gone through some really dark times and, you know, had issues and all kinds of stuff. And and she had decided that she was giving up. And if I couldn't help her, she was like, this is it. And I'm sitting there in the bookstore, and she just unloaded the table full of bills. She hadn't opened. I mean, you know, stuff had been shut off, and she was basically basically living in her car. And she said she just didn't know how to to deal. Dang, she's she's like, damn. She was going through depression. She was like, really, you know, in a bad place. So I said, listen, you know, first of all, we need to figure out who can help you, you know, and this is bigger than me. Sometimes it's bigger than actual, you know, credit issues. If it's depression or something else that's going on, you know, you may need to speak to a medical professional, a psychiatrist, psychologist, or whatever, and, and we can, you know, get you there and refer you to that if that's what's necessary because a lot of people, Mike, are embarrassed and, and there's, you know, divorce, there's pandemic. Well, well, there's why, do you think there's, why do you think they're embarrassed? Let's talk about that because... Because, it's, because it, they look at their friends and they think that their friends are doing well or their family members are successful and they think that they're going to be judged based on what somebody else may or may not have. I mean... Just like for years, I know people may not come back to homecoming because they think, oh, so-and-so is a doctor, so-and-so is a lawyer, so-and-so is an Indian chief, whatever. You don't know what anybody's situation is, and anybody can be whatever they want to be on Facebook or Instagram, you know, <laughs> you know, Snapchat. You can be beautiful with no blemishes if you choose to. But then the reality sets in, and people think you're going to judge them if you're not as successful or if you don't have as much money or if it's perceived that you're not doing as well as somebody else. Well, but one thing I notice is that sometimes having bad credit doesn't necessarily come down to a reflection of how much money you have. Sometimes, of course not. Sometimes it it's like your habits. You know what I mean? Your habits yep. and you're not paying attention or you're not thorough or you're not organized mm-hmm. or things like that that could make your credit go low, even All though you it. have the money to, to, to pay your right. bills. There are people who have money who don't use their money wisely, who have not you know, been taught. A lot of, of people in our age group, and you know, we're, we may be a little bit older than some, but may not have had financial literacy classes. They may not have been exposed to balancing checkbooks or or taught not to get 20 credit cards because somebody offered you some M&Ms or a newspaper or a magazine. Ha, 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 Them M&Ms, the peanut M&Ms were good, girl. What you talking about? (laughs) I mean, and and I've seen people get towels or, or magazine subscription or whatever the flavor of the month is for a credit card. And then there you are. You've paid for that towel, those M&Ms, a hundred thousand times over mm, in the, mm, that interest rate. You mm, know, mm, I had one client, Mike. She had decent credit, but she went to a store and they said, "Hey, you want a credit card?" You know, they gave her the credit card, didn't check anything, said, "You're pre-approved. Just sign here." She was paying twenty-nine percent interest on a store credit card, which is that is not good. I mean, and she had decent credit, but she just signed because she wanted the credit card at the time. Crazy, man. I know when I got my first credit card at Rich's, I didn't even consider. (laughs) I didn't consider interest rate. I didn't consider Mm -hmm. the fact that. Most people don't even understand interest rate when they get a credit card. They're just getting a credit card thinking it's free money, and it's not free money. Right. I didn't think it had any. It didn't even come to my mind at all. Like, oh, this is low or this is high. Literally, I ran my credit limit up before I got my first statement. I was all the wow. way up to the top. And them tires I bought, was long, uh-huh. they were long gone while I was still paying <laughs> them payments about five years later. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's what I tell, tell my clients. 
if the, the department store has a sale and they have the baddest shoes you can find for $25, I, they were $400 initially and they're marked down to $25, don't charge them. Pay cash for them because you're going to be paying way more than the $25 if you charge them. Mm-hmm. So just pay cash for them. And, and if you're like me, nine times out of ten, you don't need the shoes, you know. That's what I, I teach a class on needs versus wants. You know, a lot of times we see something, you say, oh, that's nice. And, and you know, <laughs> I've, I've been told I'm, I'm a reformed shoe-aholic. My name is Lisa Rogers Cherry, and <laughs> shoes were my thing. I mean, I could not drive by DSW without having the shakes, you know, like, okay, i got to run in there and grab uh... a pair of shoes. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's, you get to a point where you say, okay, I don't need 150 pair of shoes. There, there are 365 days in a week. You know, you don't need that many mm-hmm. pairs of shoes. Mm-hmm. And and my husband used to say, "How many black pairs of shoes do you need?" And I'm like, "Well, I need the strappy ones. I need the pumps. I need the you know each one. I need the patent leather. I need the shiny. Yeah. Uh, the I sling some, bag. Yeah. You know, the the toe out. Hey, <laughs> the toe out. The the, the snake skins. Oh man, keep uh, it all, going. The boots. You know, you, you just different ba- pairs go with different. I mean, you can the guys can pack two pair of shoes for a week, and a woman has a weekend bag with twelve pairs of shoes because you need different ones for different outfits. But I learned. I went to homecoming again one year, and they lost my luggage. So I learned to never ever ever pack ten pairs of shoes for a weekend, and never ever ever again. I put my few pairs of shoes in a carry-on, and I take them with me. Mm. I heard I lost that. my favorite pair of shoes on my way to homecoming. I'll never forget it. But, mm. I mean, I got paid back, but I could never find the, the shoes that I had again. But, hey. Hey. That was, that was my lesson. You don't need that many pair of shoes. And, and I mean, the, the important thing is wants versus needs. Mm-hmm. And, and I teach my children, and thank God my children – are, my son is 16 and my daughter is 19. They're not into like name brands. They could care less. <laughs> so they never got caught up into that. You know, right. Some of their friends are like, "What are those? You know, what are those?" Oh, uh, hitting but, them with the "What are those?" <laughs> but they could, they could care less. <laughs> Whatever you know, if they think they're cute or if they, my son is as nonchalant about dressing. You know, if if he has his Nike gear on, he's good. Oh, he well, shit, care. he got on Nike gear. What do you mean? It, it, but, I mean, he doesn't care <laughs> because I'm buying Nike gear. He can wear no name, oh. the same hoodie for a week. He doesn't care. He yeah. doesn't get caught up in that. I yeah. may treat him to something because I know, you know, teenagers and what they think is perceived to be cool. But, you know, that's not how they were raised. So, that's not important to them. And, and, and I think it's all about instilling values in your children early, teaching them how to save, how to budget, you know, the importance of a dollar, that you can't buy everything just because your friends have it or because somebody's going to tease you. And peer pressure and bullying is real, you know. So you, you have to focus on, you know, education. My daughter knows she's at school and she's, you know, at Spelman. So education is what she's there for. She's not in a fashion show, but she can look nice and not spend all of her mom and dad's money on clothes. Yeah, because, look, uh, um, one thing I was impressed about with your book were your um, your titles of mm-hmm. your um, chapters, starting off with the first one. I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> I fell out <laughs> laughing. I'm <laughs> broke, busted, and disgusted. What does but that how many mean? People can can identify with that. I mean, they don't have any money. They're struggling. I mean, right now, let's say for instance, mm-hmm. people who are victims of the pandemic, some people have been laid off, some people's jobs have been downsized, and they didn't imagine that this would last this long or they didn't foresee themselves being in this predicament. Usually I teach my clients to try to save two or three months of income. I mean, that's what the experts say across the board. You should always have two or three months of your income. Whatever you you make per month, you should have that saved in your savings. (coughs) And, I mean, I don't know a whole lot of people who look like us who have that. 
I mean, some people do, but not a whole lot. Most do not. And right. what's, what's and interesting, though, is how people, no matter how much you make, mm-hmm. there's a high percentage of people in America who live check to check. Whether your check is $1,000 or Mm -hmm. $40,000, people are still spending more than they have. Right. Uh, Every day. I mean, that's a common occurrence. So I try to teach, you know, people to save as much as they can. But it's hard to save when you can't make ends meet. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to sit down, prepare a budget, which is the bad B word. It's just a spending plan. How much you make minus how much your expenses are will give you your bottom line. If that bottom line is a negative number, we have to cut some things off of your expense list. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and even me, since the pandemic, I cut my cable. I no longer have 800 channels. I just have basic. And I just did that two weeks ago. Mm, Aren't you special? And, and, And when I got my bill today, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Because my bill is a third of what I was paying before because I bundled everything. Now my cable, my um, house phone, and Wi-Fi. And we upgraded the, the Wi-Fi because both kids are here now. And they're doing projects and I'm doing calls and, mm-hmm. and counseling. So with, even with all of that, it's less than $100 now. Man, that's how I am because, like, I did this about two years ago where mm-hmm. I got rid of cable and... Mm-hmm. I like you said. I I strengthened up my uh, my Wi-Fi package, and I I bought some apps. I got Netflix, I Hulu, HBO, and Showtime. Mm-hmm. That's all I have. And uh, I bought this little Roku box for like eighty dollars at Best Buy. And mm-hmm. literally, my expenditure for cable is like seventy five dollars now. Where it was like two hundred forty dollars, yep. wiping That's me out. Exactly right. I looked at mine today. It was seventy three, seventy three ninety eight, something like that. I was like, "Thank mm-hmm. you, God," because it's been two something forever. And I should have done it a long time ago. But I was like, "Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it." But during this pandemic, I've had to cut some things. I've said, mm-hmm. "Okay, you know, things aren't coming in as, as as readily as they were. Some of my clients have fallen off because they have to, you know, make tough choices. Do I pay for this food or do I pay for this medicine?" And, you know, the, the extras are being cut. Right. Extras so, are being cut. You know, it's, that's just one of the, these things. And, and we have to see what we can cut to, to survive. And um, I'm sharing information, like, um, about the, the federal student loans. Some of those are being suspended. I just read an article about um, the, what is it, the um, housing there's, there's oh, doing huh? discounts the, on, on rental assistance. Mm-hmm. Rental assistance is available. They're not evicting. They're not doing evictions and mortgages. They're putting a freeze on those for tempor- you know, temporarily for a little while until they figure out what, what's next. People are being laid off. The country is hurting. It's not just a few people that are struggling. It's not just low income. It's low, moderate, and high income people that are affected. Right. Everybody's being affected by this. I right. Mean, I just saw that they may be closing. Um, Lord and Taylor is closing. Neiman Marcus may be closing. So some of the big wigs are, are feeling this, too, across the country, across the world. Right, right, no doubt. So, so I mean, we have to figure out what we can cut and what we can do differently. Um, if people are, are getting free grocery, dis- going to distributions. People who never imagined. I mean, we did one at our church, like, for one, two, three months. On Tuesdays, we'd give food away. People were driving up in Mercedes, Lexuses, and getting that food and happy to get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's it's not, you know, it's not just white people. It's not just black people. It's not just Hispanic. It's everybody. So well, whatever we can do to help people to survive in this economy, that's what we're doing. You talked about how when you're living check to check, how the smallest mm-hmm. thing could wreck your world, like mm-hmm. um, like needing some new tires or something for something might happen for five. It's only four hundred dollars, but you're living all the way check to check. You can't even deal with if the smallest it, emergency. Right. And, and I, I mentioned one of my clients. She had a dental emergency. She 
she needed a fill-in. She didn't have dental insurance, and her doctor said she would, you know, do the fill-in, but it was, it was $175. She didn't have it. She had to get the tooth pulled. So when she got the tooth pulled and the other teeth started shifting, she had to save, you know, enough money so she could go and get the, the partial or whatever dental extra thing she's going to have to get now and braces because her teeth are shifting just because she didn't have $175 saved. You know, one hundred seventy-five dollars is a lot if if you're trying to get grocery. Right. You know. Yeah, you got to so, decide between between buying the groceries and being able to eat the groceries. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big or decision. sleep tonight because your tooth is hurting so bad and your jaw is swollen and you can't function because you have a toothache. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, if she would have, if she would have saved, you know, ahead of time, if she had it to save, then you know, perhaps we could have worked out something differently right? or had insurance. And that's another thing we talk about, you know, making sure you have insurance in place, whether it's health, dental, or life insurance. I mean, Mike, I don't know how many times we've seen where people ask us to contribute to help pay for someone's f- funeral, somebody's family member, right. they're a little short, right. um, go, go fund me or the jar in the grocery store. You know, if if they would have planned ahead or been able to save a little bit back and do some kind of uh, life insurance policy, then they don't have to do that. Um, there's another good, interesting concept where you said don't loan money that you can't afford to give. What do you mean yes. by that? My grandmother used to say, if you can't give it, don't loan it. I, I've had <laughs> some good friends that are no longer good friends because... You know, you make a loan, and then they they start avoiding you. They don't want to talk to you because they owe you money. Yeah, isn't that so the craziest thing? I loaned you yeah. money. Now, you're not and talking you to mad. me. And you <laughs> right. beat me, you beat me, get mad. <laughs> yeah. I remember I, I had a summer job, and this guy, he said, let me hold a couple dollars. I need some lunch money. And I was like, sure. This was on a Tuesday. He was like, I'll give it back to you on Friday when we get paid. Okay, no problem. And I gave it to him. Friday, I didn't see him. The mm. next Friday, I didn't see him. And mm. we got paid every two weeks. He was ducking me, so I went by his office one day. And he's like, oh, so-and-so, you don't need your stank money. You know, I'm like, okay, now the money is stank. Uh. When I listen to you, <laughs> it wasn't stank, you know. But people get mad at you about your money. And, and so if you can't give it, I say don't loan it. And another thing that I say, and you'll get to this in the book if you hadn't gotten to it yet, don't co-sign. I've seen more people in trouble financially on on their credit reports for co-signing for somebody else. People are in a relationship, they're dating a guy, and he's, oh, babe, just co-sign for me. Okay, co-sign. Two months later, he's gone with the car, and you're stuck paying for the loan, or vice versa. She's gone with the car, and you're stuck paying for the loan. I mean, parents with kids. Come. I'm like, hey, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but be careful. I mean, with loans, some of the the loans uh, for college, I know you can you the students can pay for themselves, and then they have some of the um, parent partnership loans that, that they can take out. But just remember, if somebody doesn't pay and your name is on it. You're stuck with that on your credit report. Man, and it and it doesn't go away just because um, you don't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't go say, away. You say, oh, well, I'm not even dating him anymore. Right. Well, my, child, my child isn't here. She, she doesn't live in the house anymore. She's moved on. She's married, gone to Hawaii, and you're still responsible for that. You're liable for that And when you, you signed. And when you do a co-sign... Mm-hmm. When you want somebody to co-sign for you, really at the core of it is you don't have enough money. The bank is saying, I don't trust you to pay it back by yourself, so we're <laughs> going to get somebody else who we can trust who a little we bit better. Who do trust, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Whose credit is a little bit better than yours, who we can find, and that's why they do it. Man. Um, another, another chapter, I love this title, is More Money, More Problems. And, and it's so funny, Mike, because a lot of people think the more money you have, the easier your life is, and that's not necessarily true. I mean, we see some extremely wealthy people who are de- 
depressed, despondent, and mm-hmm. making bad decisions. Mm-hmm. They have more money, but they still have more problems. Right. And you being an educated woman, you threw the R-E on both of those words because it should be more money, more problems. <laughs> I was an English major, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> to work with you. <laughs> no, but that's true, though, because, you know, the more money you get, the more you start to expand your spending. And you right. start getting extra services, you get extra items, more cards, bigger house, m- bigger house or mo- multiple houses. And mm-hmm. the thing is, even if you can afford it, it's like more to manage. You may not be fit for managing all that shit, right. you know, and right. it and, will and, take you and down. And then, guess what? If I know you've made it big, oh, Mike's out in Cali. He has his radio show. He's doing it big. Mike, let me hold 50000 Let me hold 25000 I know you got it. You oh, know, I up. got <laughs> it. Raise the roof, y'all. Raise the roof. Hook us this stuff, you know, and, and they're going to be coming at you, and, you know, your kids may expect more stuff and because they know whoever, cousin so-and-so who has made it, they're expecting them to help them out. You see it all the time with athletes. Oh, yeah. You know, they make it. They become successful. They have to buy their mama a car, their ma- mm-hmm. mama a house. Mm-hmm. Cousin so-and-so is expecting them to pay off all their debt. Expecting. And, That's the key word yes. there, expecting. Yes. And, I mean, and, and none of that's figured into the budget. <laughs> right. And, and, and cousin so-and-so who's standing there with her hand out or his hand out, isn't running the ball or doing any practicing or it getting injured. And when you get injured and kicked off the team, because of so-and-so ain't going to be nowhere around to help you with your wounds, you know? Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. have to make good decisions, and I think that's the name of that chapter, make good decisions and, and use your money wisely and invest it wisely. So once you retire from your career and doing well, you have some money saved for a rainy day, and it's going to rain. It's raining right now. This pandemic is... What I've been telling Monsoon. people, <laughs> save money for a rainy day. Nobody could have imagined that we'd be in this position, you know, for this long. Some people have been out of work since the pandemic started. Right. So if you saved, if you had three months saved, it's past three months now, what do you do? Unemployment is shaky at best. You know, they, they cut it off. They may start it back. They may not. And and is it enough anyway? What they were giving? I know. I mean, so, yeah, yeah. It ain't. It's not enough to to save your life. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> not to maintain your your probably your your standard of lifestyle or your standard of living. So you have to supplement. You have to cut. You have to to sell some items that you may have your household items or jewelry or whatever until we can get through this. And, and that's the thing. Uh, I, I talked to a girl the other day. She posted, she said she was really struggling, and, and she had gotten laid off, and she had to make some tough decisions, and, and she had applied for several jobs. But if everybody's getting laid off, not everybody, but a lot of people are getting laid off, the jobs aren't readily available. So right. I said, well, do you have any items that you could pawn or sell? Or, you know, because she was saying I had, she had some bills that she needed to pay right away. And and that's the other thing, Mike. I always tell people, call either your mortgage company or your light bill company or whoever you owe and talk to them and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. I promise to pay as soon as I get it, or I can give you $50 on it right now. Put or, something on it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you communicate, nine times out of ten people will work with you. What do you think and, the and essential I, bills are? Because people have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of bills. Uh, when it comes down to it, if you're in trouble or financial trouble, um, wh- what should you be looking at? Like, I only going to pay these bills. Well, well, it depends because some I, I know when I went to pay my car payment, there was a little um, note at the top of on the website. If you're having problems, call this number, you know, and they'll they'll work out something. I mean, they were suspending different payments, the federal. Um, Student loans are being suspended until December. Some federal student loans, you have to call to make sure yours is on the list or, you know, if you have one. But some of the private ones are not. You still have to pay those. But just make sure that your situation, and I I do the caveat in my book, this isn't for everybody. You know, every situation is different. So you call your student loan office and say, hey, are you all 
um, suspending payments until December because I just posted that on my Lisa Rogers Cherry Writes um, page on Facebook, that the article about the student loans being suspended, certain ones. Um, so you call your, your different um, vendors or whoever you owe, FP&L, that's our light company here, hey, I'm having problems. Is there some way I can not pay this month or if I can give you something, you know, and I'll pay it as soon as I get it or, you know, just whoever you can work out something with. Certain credit card companies are willing to work with you. Um, you just have to call and ask. Let people know your situation. Don't suffer in silence. If you're sitting there not saying anything, of course, they're going to cut your lights off, they're going to turn your water off, and you're going to be sitting there hot in, <laughs> in the dark with no water. And they're going to come get your car. They're, they're going to c- come get your car. <laughs> the repo man is coming to get your car. You better call and say something to somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and I know, like, the different counties have assistance, some kind of financial assistance. So if there's anything available, you know, call your, your elected officials. They know. They get the, the dibs on the federal monies that are coming down. They find out first. So call your elected officials, find out what's coming down the pipeline, and, and go for it. I mean, I, I've helped people fill out all kinds of applications. People are getting money um, now that they never imagined that they would get. So wow. I, mean, I, I helped um, at my job. They, they did the PPP application. I did the PPP application, and we were able to get that money to help with the payroll. Wow. So So there's money available. Everybody says... You know, if I didn't get it, keep trying. Call somebody. Because of the, the relationship that I have with one of the bankers, we were able to get it. And that's another thing that I talk about in the book. Make sure you have a relationship with people. And be nice to people, Mike, because you never know. Right. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I was nice to you in school. See? Hey, yeah. see you there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You're lucky I mean, you I, smiled I, I, at me in the parking lot that one time. <laughs> or else. <laughs> oh, we were hanging in the parking lot. What are you talking about? Um, you never know who, who you're going to need. I've always said establish good relationships with the banker because even with me and my bank where I bank, I go in normally at Christmas time. I'll drop off postcards. I'll get some $2 cookies. Hey, hey guys, Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate and have these cookies. And guess what? When I see interest rates or some random fee i'm calling hey joe what is this fee and nine times out of ten they will take it off Mm -hmm. you know if you have a relationship with people Mm -hmm. and you're nice to people that Mm -hmm. a lot of times that that goes a long way um okay there's another chapter i found i think everything's funny but um this was called will a person rob god Uh uh-oh will a person rob god that was like, I was like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> so that, means, that means are you paying your tithe when you go to church? Or, or now you're not going to church. Most people are doing church virtually. But are you giving your 10% back to the church? 10% well, of whatever you make? Well, you dug deeper because you support paying tithes and making a way to pay your tithes. But it's these other things like the building fund and the roof fund and the 20 <laughs> envelopes that keep coming through the church and how people put in extra money to in hopes that God is going to re- fulfill their, what do you call that, like opportunity dollars? I don't know. You had a good name prosperity, for it. Prosperity. They have, they have prosperity plans and yeah. special offerings and, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm Mike, you know me. I'm a church girl, so I believe in, in paying my tithe. Now, what I tell my clients, for me, what has worked for me, I've been a tither since I'm, I was eight years old. So I, do, I take that tithe off the top. Before I pay myself, I pay my tithe. I mean, and different people believe different things. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, but that's worked for me. And, and I remember one time I got mad at, at one of my former pastors, and I said, I ain't paying tithes. I'm not giving my money. And before I left church, I had a flat tire. <laughs> and, and I called my mom and I said, Mom, you know, had a flat tire. Can you get somebody to help me or whatever? She said, you can have more than that if you don't pay your tithe. Oh, and she man. hung up. She said, figure it out. So <laughs> I, I got the, one of my friends that I grew up with was walking by, and he helped me with my tire. 
I got turned back around, wrote the check to, for my tithes, and <laughs> then dropped it in the box at the church. And I was like, look, that's one thing that I don't, you know, not do. Now, some of the other things we can talk about, you know, whether you give to sacrificial offering or whether you give extra love offering or whatever, but the tithing, I believe in. Yeah, so the other items, it's like don't put yourself in a poor house right. just to and, do and, these and, things. And I, I, when, I, when I wrote it, I was working for a, a pastor at the time, and, and I work for one now. I mean, I, I do a lot of consulting with the churches. Um, so that, that's kind of a, a sensitive spot for some people. But I'm not going to tell you not, pay, not to pay your light bill, you know, it, sacrifice. Right. Money for the church, right. you know, pay the church's light bill before you you pay your own. I'm not gonna tell you to do that. Right. So that's right. just you gotta use your common you, sense. You, you have to right. You have to do what works for you. But I believe in tithing, but you do what works for you. Um, um, one thing I think, you know, is it relates to people in debt and everything like that, and it, how it piles on and piles on. I think a lot of people, uh, including the way myself, the way I used to think, um, are waiting for like a big hit to happen, like a big pot of money. Like eventually I'm just going to get some money and I'll be able to pay all this but, shit but off. You know what? You know what, Mike? A lot of people think that when you say it, it, it's happened to me, I posted, oh, you know, thank God for the blessing or it, I was blessed yesterday. And one of our Morehouse brothers called me and said, how much money did you get? A blessing isn't always money. Mm -hmm. We have health and strength. My, my children are doing well. I mean, my daughter may have gotten a scholarship. My son may have been selected for the band he was auditioning for, and he's in uh, performing arts. So, you know, he's in six different bands. So that may be my blessing. It doesn't necessarily mean money. If, if I pray God bless us or God order my steps or God grant me favor. Favor might be getting in my car and getting to work safely the way these crazy people down here in South Florida drive. I mean, <laughs> right. getting from point A to point B without being in an accident may be the favor that I need. And, and sometimes you drive by and you see four cars piled up and you just say, you know, thank God for sparing me and Lord have mercy on those who were involved. You know, mm -hmm. that's favor. Mm -hmm. And it's not always a money thing. And people believe as soon as you say, you know, I was blessed that it's money. It's not always money. It may be your mom's doing well or your mom got something or, or it, it got out of the hospital or a family member was healed or anything. It could be anything. It could be something simple. Do you think being in debt is like, um, can be like a habit? You know, like um, you develop the habit of never paying on time, of never you know paying what? the full amounts, of never closing the loop on things? One time I was doing an interview, and the guy told me, that, that interviewed me, he was a pastor of a small church, I'll never forget. He said, the Bible says that there will always be poor amongst you. And I said, excuse me? And it, it says something, you know, like that. But, and I said, you know what? There may be, there may always be poor amongst you, but it doesn't have to be you. you know, right. People, People will get the Bible and pick a scripture and twist it up and make it fit to their situation. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but I, Mike, you've seen my page. You know me. I've always been, you know, positive. I, my children, they do a mantra every day before a mantra, every day before they leave out of here. You know, my daughter has stuff written all over her walls. My daughter was four years old, and we made her say every day, on her way to school, today I will make good decisions. I will never give up. I'll be a leader, not a follower. I will focus and finish. I will work hard and have fun. I will, I will um, what is it, money doesn't make me, I make money. I mean, she had 12 things that she was marching out of here at four years old that she was saying. Then my son came along. He started saying the same thing. And then every year their dad would add to it, you know, something. So they're saying 20 different things. And, but, you know, <laughs> I remember dang, one Mom. day. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> look, it works. You you have to speak life. You have to be mm -hmm. positive. You have mm -hmm. to do something. And in my book, I have motivational 
quotes, I have scriptures, I have proverbs, because people need something to hold on to. And and each day, I remember going one time to my daughter's school to pick her up, and the headmaster, she was in Montessori school at that time, the headmaster came out, and I was like, oh, heck, what happened? And she said, oh, your daughter was helping little Joey with his homework. And, mm-hmm. and, and I'm like, well, hold up. Number one, what is my daughter helping somebody else? Where was the teacher? You know, so mm-hmm. I flipped it on them. And, and I asked my daughter, she said, well, Mama, I had finished and my friend needed help. So I, I helped him. You know, it, it, is, is there something wrong with that? She was looking like, what did I do wrong? But they were trying to say it was like a cheating thing because he didn't have the information and my daughter helped him or whatever. So I said, well, they perceived you as, as not doing what, and she said, not making good decisions. That's the first mantra. Today I will make this good decisions. So I said, listen, the, the new rule is, if for this little class, they don't want you to help anybody, you don't help anybody for this little class. Right. This is their rule, their school. But when you're around us, if you see somebody needs help, we help each other. That's how, you know, I raised them. And that's what I told the, the principal. I said, listen, we believe in helping each other. And the little kid who needed help looked like us, so she helped him. You know? Yeah, I, exactly. No exactly. problem on our side. But if the teacher would have been doing it, I said, we're paying all this money you know, cut my daughter a check because she had already finished her work, so she was helping the little kid who said he needed help. The teacher should have helped him. So when I got finished with them, they were like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Man. But, but, I mean, that's the whole thing. Like, <clears throat> you have to have something positive, you know, a motivational something. And during this pandemic, for me, it's been having something to look forward to. I try to keep something ahead of us. I mean, it may be a Zoom call with friends or my line sisters or – you know, my family, we do family Zooms. My mom's side of the family is huge. And we'll jump on the phone, all 80 of us, and say, hey, what are you guys doing? Let's get on a call. And, and we talk. And, and I see that some of my family, some of our Spellhouse family is on. And thank you all for tuning in. And um, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Mike. Oh, heck yeah, man. We, uh, I, the people need to hear some, um, you know, positive um, words about like what they're going through because a lot mm-hmm. of us are going through the same things, you know. Mm-hmm. And you said like you used the word embarrassment, and people don't like others to know exactly what they're going through and don't really want to ask for help sometimes or doesn't right. want to make it seem like it's like a weak reflection on who they are and stuff like that. But it's really not like that because we're all the same. Right, and a lot of people are suffering in silence, and there's no reason to because there's there's help there's some financial assistance there's food available mm-hmm. so if i know about something i'm going to tell you i'm going to put it on my facebook mm-hmm. page i'm mm-hmm. going to call 20 people and tell them to tell some people you know i'm going to jump on facebook live or something to get the word out to help as many people as i can my motto my ma- ma- mantra you know my kids have theirs mine is i'm blessed to be a blessing to others oh, and man. and i believe in that but i had to add something to it mike Okay. So I changed it. I'm blessed to be a blessing, but not to the detriment of myself. Because some people will say, oh, Lisa will do it, you know, and they, they, Lisa has it, or Lisa will do this for me, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'm helping them and not helping myself. And sacrificing your own stuff, huh? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I had, mm-hmm. I had to add that God bless me to be a blessing to others, but not to the detriment of myself. Okay, so we only have a couple minutes, right? I wanted to get mm-hmm. to this one. One, we'll just maybe tackle one more point, which okay. is um, a very um, uh, prevalent thing happening right now is identity theft, where oh people, God. where you think your credit is good, you think you're straight, and people are literally taking your identity and, um, you know, running up all credit lines and all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, what are some tips? to prevent identity theft? There there are several different great um, programs. I think LifeLock is one that will monitor your credit report for you, different things that you can get attached to your your, um, credit so that you know, like my bank, if a certain amount of money is spent, I I get an alert. And, and I check my bank account, Mike, every single day of my life 
I mean, I may have ten dollars, but that's my ten dollars, <laughs> and I'm gonna make sure that ten dollars is still in there. Right, that I, it's not nine fifty, huh? <laughs> exactly, because I've had it happen. My daughter, when she came home from school, somebody took money out of her account, and mm-hmm. and I saw it. I mean, I'm literally looking at it happen, and I'm like, hold up, who is so and so? Because they did a, tr- a Zelle transfer, and she's like, who? She didn't know who it was, so we called the bank immediately, and they caught it mid-process. Oh, really? Oh, so, okay. So, but guess, okay. guess what? why we believe it happened? She let her brother use her debit card to buy games online. Ah. So if, if you have to be extremely, extremely careful when you're buying things online because people will take your credit card numbers. If you buy gas, they can use your credit card. They're, they're doing skimming. Skimming, I think they call it, where they will um, copy your credit card while it's in the little thing. They put a little metal thing over the the it thing where you insert your card. Right. And they'll they'll steal your credit card information. I mean, there are all kinds of tricks um, that wow. that are out there, and and people are getting smarter and smarter while we're sitting here. They think of scams and cons, so you have to be extremely careful. So that's why I tell people check your bank account. I mean, I have online access. I can go on any time of the day or night and look, and I do. Wow. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. Not only your, cre- your um, bank account, your credit cards. I mean, if you have more than one credit card, I suggest you have one, but most people have more than one. Check and make sure. Don't just pay what they send you. Some people don't have the paper bills anymore. They just have online payments. Don't just pay the full amount. Look at what they're charging you for. I mean, a couple times I found on, you know, one of my credit cards that there was a charge that I didn't make, and I said, hey, I didn't buy this. I don't know what this is. I don't know who this is. I filed a claim, and they took it off. You know, after a week or two or whatever, they go through the process and make sure I'm not lying, and then they take it off. So you're Uh just saying, basically, you got to pay attention. Um, You need to pay attention. You can't just loosely be loosey-goosey going around because it's, you'll become a victim a little more right. easily. Right. Yeah. Make sure that you, you pay attention. I mean, and, and it's happened at my job. I've seen on, um, you know, the, the company's card, same thing. And, and um, we've done things like, say you, you go online and you do a 30-day subscription to something, and then after the 30-day you do, you know, do the free trial and then say, okay, after 30 days I don't want it. And you cut it off, but they still charge you again. That happened to us, like, two months ago, and I called, and I said, wait a minute, what's going on? You charged us twice for this thing that we cut off after the free trial. And they said, oh, we didn't know you. I said, oh, yes, because I put everything in writing. I know what the laws are. So I sent a letter, and I pulled up the letter and said, hey, on so-and-so date, I, I canceled the subscription, and I write everything down, document everything, because that's what I do. And they took it off, and they refunded the money instantly. I mean, I had the money before I got off the phone. I could see the transfer wow. that had been put back. But you have so, to stay so on top So, again, of it. you got to stay on top of it. you got to pay attention. Dang. Yep. So, Lisa, we're at the end of our time right now. Um, I really appreciate you calling in, and I really appreciate getting the book and everything because I really did learn a lot. Uh, people, I really want you guys to go and check this out. Uh, lifting the burdens of debt, a helpful guide to getting your debts paid and your life back on track. And just know that a great big part of this book is the getting your life back on track that is really important. Um, so wh- why don't you tell the folks where they could find the book, where they could find you and everything like that. My book is on my website, lisarogerscherry.com. And um, this month I'm not charging shipping fees, so you get the book, you get the book and I won't, I'll pay for the shipping. Um, I have my book. I have two workbooks, and I'm working on a new project that's coming soon. Please, God, help me <laughs> get it done. <laughs> but um, I, I also do one-on-one consultations. I do group seminars. Um, before the pandemic, I would fly and go different places, but right now everything's virtual. Um, hopefully, hopefully, okay. hopefully, once they get a good vaccine and the first, few groups of people take it a few million people take it then I, once i feel it's safe then yeah i was gonna say it won't be me but anyway <laughs> me <neither> Mike. <laughs> all right so, oh go ahead 
It's www.lisarogerscherry.com. And I have a, a Facebook page, too, Lisa Rogers Cherry Writes, um, and I give free tips on there. And then I do Financial Tip Friday. All right, then. On All the right. Facebook page. So thank you, Mike. Thank you. Yes, yes, me. yes. And the next project you have or whatever it is, uh, call me. Let me know. We're going to talk about that, too. All right? Yay. Thank Yay. you. Yay. I, I want to thank everybody, my Spellhouse family. I see a lot of Spellhouse family, and my family is on, and, and I appreciate the support and the love. And I love you guys, and everybody be safe. And hopefully on the other side of this pandemic, Mike is going to have a big party, and we're all going to fly off. Oh, you already know that. Celebrate. You already know that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to support your comedy show. Yeah, exactly. On tour, South yes. Florida. I just said it first right here. All right, Yay! y'all. Thanks, party people, for tuning in. Thanks, Porters. Thanks, Lisa. We out of here, y'all. Good night. Hey.